Hello friends, today in this video we shall discuss section 17 of IGST Act which deals with apportionment of IGST and settlement of funds between central government and state governments. Let's see what the section prescribes about it. It has five subsection. Subsection 1. Out of integrated tax paid to the central government in respect of interstate supply of goods, services or both to an unregistered person or to a registered person paying tax under section 10 of CGST Act. Out of integrated tax paid to central government in respect of interstate supply of goods, services or both. Where registered person is not eligible for input tax credit. Again, out of integrated tax paid to the central government in respect of interstate supply of goods, services or both. Made in a financial year to a registered person who does not avail input tax credit within specified period thus remains in the, in the integrated tax account after the expiry of due date for furnishing annual return for such year in which the supply was made. Again, in out of integrated tax paid to the central government in respect of import of services or both goods or services or both by an unregistered person or by a registered person paying tax under section 10 of CGST Act. Again, out of integrated tax paid to the central government in respect of import of good service or both where registered person is not eligible for input tax credit. Again, out of integrated tax paid to the central government in respect of import of good services or both made in a financial year by a registered person where he does not avail the said credit within the prescribed limit and thus remains in the integrated tax account after the expiry of due date for furnishing annual return for such year in which the, the supply was received. So, out of all these integrated tax, the amount of tax collected at the rate equivalent to central tax sim on the similar on the similar interested supply shall be apportioned to the central government. So out of all this integrated tax, amount of tax calculated at the rate equivalent to central tax. On similar interested supply shall be apportioned to the central government. Let's see what subsection 2 prescribes. The balance amount of the integrated tax remaining in the integrated tax amount in respect of the supply for which apportionment to the central government has been done under subsection 1 shall be apportioned to the state where such supply takes place and central government where such supply takes place in a union territory. So balance amount shall be apportioned in this manner. Let's see what the proviso prescribes where the location of such supply made by any taxable person cannot be determined separately, the said balance amount shall be apportioned to each state 
and central government in relation to union territories proviso prescribes about where uh, place of supply cannot be determined and this shall be apportioned in proportion to the total supplies made by such taxable person to each such states or union territories as the case may be in a financial year let's see what uh, proviso prescribes about it proviso further states that where taxable person making such supplies is not identifiable where taxable person making such supplies is not identifiable said balance amount shall be apportioned to all state and central government in the proportion to the amount collected as state tax as the case may be union territory tax by the respective state as the case may be by central government during the immediately preceding financial year so this proviso prescribes about where taxable person uh, making supplies are not identifiable let's see what subsection 2a prescribes the amount not apportioned under subsection 1 subsection 2 may for the time being on the recommendation of council may be apportioned at the rate of 50% to the central government and 50% to the state governments or union territories as the case may be on a ad hoc basis and shall be adjusted against the amount apportioned under said subsections let's see what subsection 3 prescribes subsection 3 provisions of section 1 and sex subsection 1 and subsection 2 relating to apportionment of integrated tax sell mutatis and mutandis apply to apportionment of interest penalty and compounding amount realized in connection with the tax so apportion it so interest penalty and compounding amount shall also be apportioned according to the integrated tax let's see what uh, subsection 4 prescribes where amount has been apportioned to the central government state government under subsection 1 subsection 2 subsection 3 the amount collected as integrated tax shall stand reduced by an amount equal to the amount so apportioned and central government shall transfer to the central tax account or union territory tax account an amount equal to respective amount apportioned to the central government and shall transfer to state tax account of respective states an amount equal to the amount apportioned to that state in such manner within such time as may be prescribed so this is about transfer of uh, transfer of central integrated tax into central tax account and state tax or union territory tax account let's see what the section 5 prescribes sub section 5 prescribes any integrated tax apportioned to state as the case may be set to the central government on account of union territory tax if subsequently found to be refundable to any person and refunded to such person shall be reduced from the amount so to be apportioned under this section to such state or central government on account of such union territory 
in such manner within such time as may be prescribed so this is about refund to any person and adjustment against the state so thank you for watching this is all about apportionment of igst and settlement of fund thank you